Hello children, welcome to Mr. Smith Flip Lesson uh, on the causes of the Great Depression and in this video we'll be looking specifically at the cause um, of overproduction. So overproduction, you know, production, making things quite literally, too many things were made during the 1920s which partially caused, which is maybe the greatest cause of the Great Depression. So first uh, we want to learn a uh, very important, perhaps the most important um, uh, concept in economics, okay, and therefore history. It's supply and demand. You've probably all heard of it before. Uh, supply and demand. This is the rule of economics. Um, when there is more of something, supply, the less people will pay for it, demand. The more of something there is, the higher the supply, the less amount of money or effort uh, or demand people will have for that thing. Think of uh, like diamonds, for example. If there were super pure, um, beautifully cut diamonds just lying around in the grass all over the planet Earth, they would probably, I mean, would you pay $1,000 for a diamond ring? Probably not, because you could just pick it up off the ground. Because diamond is so rare it's expensive. You could think of it like gasoline stations, right? Um, you know, you can go down the street and see, you know, at Sunoco, maybe gas is two fifty a gallon. Well, because there's such a high supply of gasoline, you know, you know, you could drive another five, 10 minutes and possibly see a lower price at another place. So because there's so much supply, uh, you feel less um, forced into paying whatever uh, that gasoline company is charging for their gasoline. This will be very important here because with overproduction, that means that the supply became too great, causing the demand for products to fall and therefore the price of products to fall. Because if people aren't demanding a product, well, companies are going to have to charge less for it to make people more likely to buy it. Okay, if no one's buying those new Nike sneakers, everyone thinks they're ugly, well, uh, Nike might want to lower the price, and then some people, you know, may end up buying it uh, anyway. So overproduction in agriculture um, happened in the 1920s. Um, during World War I, a lot of food was needed to supply the war effort um, and supply America's allies overseas as well. And well, farms just kind of kept producing the same amount of wheat and other crops even after the war ended. Um, and so this is one of the things farms were in trouble far, you know, long before the stock market crash of 1929, farms were going out of business um, because of this. So there were more crops being planted than people could buy uh, or would be willing to buy. And so farmers had to sell all these bushels of wheat for like nothing. Uh, for practically nothing, um, for a price so low that these farmers then weren't making out of enough money from their crops to pay their expenses, like their employees, like um, repairs, like, um, you know, for plows and to grow their business. Uh, so companies could, you know, to pay their living expenses like food. So this caused farms to lay off workers, lay off, essentially, you're firing someone because you simply can't pay them anymore. So you're not firing them because they're a bad worker. A layoff is firing someone because you just don't have enough money to keep paying them um, and cause a lot of farms to go out of business. We also had overproduction in industry. So in, in industry, so um, we have this flow chart here at the bottom. So there was a really high demand for things in the 1920s. That's why farms and industries overproduced because a lot of people were buying things for reasons we'll learn about uh, later in this lesson. So there's a ton of demand. So stores are, you know, companies are producing a lot of things to meet that demand to sell the stuff. Um, so stores are, are ordering huge inventories, um, huge um, amounts of items to sell. And they're just, you know, kind of keeping these items in the back room. Eventually, um, you know, as people can't keep buying stuff at the rate that they were buying things at, these stores start to realize, wait, we're not selling any of that stuff in the back. You know, so we need to stop ordering new products from our manufacturers 
Um, cause we have enough stuff that we're going to have our, uh, need a lot of time just to sell what we already have. So now manufacturing companies like factories aren't getting enough orders anymore. Um, so, uh, stores and manufacturers both have to lay off workers and or go bankrupt, right? Um, if you're not able to sell anything else out of your store because demand has fallen, well, you're going to have to get rid of workers, lower your costs, or go out of business. Um, and if you're a factory and no more stores want you to make stuff for them, well, you're going to have to lower your costs by laying off workers uh, or going bankrupt. So you can see this is kind of like a vicious cycle. Okay, for example, if there are less cars being sold, you can see how this spreads to the whole economy. Well, then there's less... Uh, oil for gasoline being sold, less rubber for tires, less steel for the car's frame, less textiles for the seats in the car, um, you know, which causes unemployment, lower wages, and, and those people who are unemployed and being paid less can't buy as many cars. So this causes car sales to fall further and the steel industry and rubber and oil and textile industries to fall further and more people go at uh, lower wages and unemployment. So you see it can be a vicious cycle. And overproduction, there you have it, the first uh, and perhaps most major cause of the Great Depression.